Everything has a price, everything will always have a price, and we will always honor that price. One thing I really have been meaning to talk about, video game stores not pricing their games. It's something I've been hearing about online. What I want to start with is a Reddit thread. That's what made me think of this topic. I read two threads in the same day. One of them was a guy in the game collecting subreddit, basically not bragging, but just saying, you know, I got a great deal on a copy of Kuon for the PS2. So he was talking about how he picked it up for $200. And that is a really expensive game. I believe it goes for six or $700, maybe even more now. I know it's one we don't get quite often. Then there was another thread same day posted by the owner of the store that the person bought the game from. What this person said was the game was out there was no price on it his employee looked up the price and quoted the price for the North American version which was around six or seven hundred bucks and then the customer basically tricked the employee into thinking it was the Japanese version. So then they took the price from here, brought it down to here. They looked it up again and they sold it to him for the $200 ish price tag. So the owner was basically saying he got scammed uh, while the other person was kind of like, you know, I got a really good deal. And then my question to the owner was, do you price your games in your store? And then he went on to answer a few other questions I asked him, but he did not address the issue. So what I believe happened was he had the game without a price. And I, I would guess he probably doesn't price anything in his store. And so when someone comes in, they have to ask. And I think the strategy kind of backfired on him in this case because he had an employee who either was pressured into lowering the price of the game or just wasn't knowledgeable. My position is that game should have been priced properly and put out if he expected to get full value for it. When I think of it, going into a store or stores not pricing their games, it affects three kind of groups of people. So I'd say number one, it's the customer. Number two, it's the employee who works at the store that has to deal with this issue. And then three, it affects the owner. And I'm going to go over how I think it's a terrible idea as a store owner to try and do that. We're going to start first with the customer. I just would not enjoy going into a store and having to ask every time I want to know the price of something. I like to browse. I like to see how much things are. It would really ruin the shopping experience for me. It would be hard for me to get a feel for how a store prices games. So when I go into a store, I like to see, you know, do they overprice their rare stuff? Are they below price charting on certain things above? And it really, it, it doesn't bother me if I go into a store and things are a bit higher than market value. If they have good selection and everything's in good shape and it's something I want, I'm the type of collector I'll typically overpay quote unquote for something if it's in good condition and it's in front of me and I can see it and I can take it home with me right away. But I kind of want to get a feel for how these things are going to be priced when I'm shopping at a store. It just makes the browsing experience a lot more enjoyable for me. The other crappy thing for the customer is if you're bringing something to the counter and it's being looked up, you're likely going to pay the highest possible price every time. So there's no chance that you're going to find a game priced a little under market value or maybe the store made a mistake and there's a game you've been looking for and they've kind of mispriced it so you've got an opportunity to get a good deal collectors like they like we live for that moment right where we find a good deal and it's not like you want to screw over the store or anything one game selling under value is not going to not going to bankrupt a store. So, I mean, it's just part of the thrill of the hunt, right? You never know what you're going to find. You never know what the price is. And I find if I went into a store and did not have prices, it would just ruin that whole shopping experience for me. I am not a fan of no prices in game stores. The other thing too for customers is you're going to feel ripped off. So if you do go in and the game doesn't have a price and then the owner just looks it up, sees what the eBay price is, likely the buy it now price or high end price charting. And then they like what I'm hearing is they do that plus a percentage. You may buy something the one time, but you're going to feel ripped off and I'm not going to come back to your store. I mean, if I go in and I don't see prices, I'm going to walk out. But typically if someone comes in and buys something, 
the odds of you getting that repeat business from them are really low. Again, not a good experience for the customer. I would just never shop at a store like that. It's not for me. And I don't think it's for the majority of people in the community. I don't think people enjoy going to a store and not seeing prices on games. The second person that gets affected is the employee. So someone has to work at this store. There's no prices on anything. Their job is now to just sit there and look up things online whenever someone's interested. So could you imagine having someone come in and they're browsing, they've never been to the store before and they're, they're interested in like 30 or 40 things. So you're sitting there just answering this person. Oh, this goes for this, this goes for this. You're kind of gonna get overworked as an employee. You're not gonna enjoy that. The customers are gonna get annoyed. You're gonna have to deal with that. It's likely gonna be a place that you're not gonna wanna work for very long. I know I wouldn't wanna work for a place like that where if I'd be just be doing unnecessary work, uh, to me, the prices should be there. My job's to talk to you, sell you the game. Really not fun for the employee in this situation. And then the other thing too is open to possible mistakes, right? So if you have to price things on the fly every time, the chance of you making a mistake increases because you're you're basically having to do everything in real time. You don't have time to think about it. Um, no one's pricing something and then someone else is checking your work if there's more than one employee or there's the employee and the owner. Money's going to be lost and then the employee will probably get blamed for it from the owner. So I would imagine the owner wasn't happy with this employee who sold the Kuon for under market value. And this is a new employee. They probably feel terrible that they that they quote unquote screwed up. I don't think they did. I don't think it's their fault. The last thing, again, if you're spending all of your time looking up prices, you're on your phone or you're on a laptop or whatever the setup is, there's other people shopping. They may have questions. If you're spending your whole day looking games up, you're not providing good customer service. You're not having good conversations with your clients. You're not doing the best customer service job that you could. You're not gonna be happy. Customer service is gonna suffer. It's just not gonna be a good employee experience. So I, I, in conclusion, I would quit a job like that in a heartbeat. I wouldn't work there. If I walked in and that my job day one was just to look up prices, I'd be, I'd be gone at the end of the shift. Really not good for the employee. So we've gone over how it affects the customer and the employee. And now we're actually going to go over how it affects the owner. The owner may think they're kind of this genius by having this scheme where they just charge you the highest price possible at that point in time. To me, in the long term, you're actually going to lose business and not do as well as you could if you were just upfront and had prices on things. Number one, you're going to have frustrated customers. So people like me coming into your store want to buy something or interested in the price. They're not going to like the shopping experience. They're going to be frustrated. You're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have a lack of repeat business. You might get someone to overpay for something that they really want where you've looked up the price and really charged a uh, premium on the game. They're not going to come back or they're going to look for alternatives to get their stuff at a fair price. Your long-term profit or business is going to suffer. The other issue is it just looks lazy. If you want the most value for your inventory, which I don't begrudge any owner for that, then take the time to price stuff. I mean, if it's your business, you should be there looking at the games, you should know your market, and you should take the time to reprice stuff. So I don't have a problem if an owner wants to go you know, once a week, once a month, go through the shelves and look up games. If this game's gone up, okay, fine, increase it. The other thing too is when you're buying games as a business, you're typically buying them based on the value at a point in time when you get them in. Yes, you can go increase the prices, but you're getting them at a certain value and planning to sell them at a certain price. So it's not the end of the world if a game sells for slightly under market value because you've already bought it at a lower price in theory. Again, I don't get the whole having to get the most for every game that sells in your store because you're buying them at a point in time based on what you're gonna value them at that time. And then kind of covered in the employee section is the fact that if your employees are frustrated, they're gonna quit. And then you're gonna have to hire someone new, you're gonna have to train them, that costs money. You're kind of, messing with the customer and the employee. And that's kind of like the, the heartbeat of your business, I would say. If your customers are unhappy and your employees are unhappy, yes, you may make a few sales at a slightly higher value, but in the long run, you're gonna lose business, you're gonna pay money to train new people, and overall, your business is not gonna do as well if you were just honest and upfront with your pricing. Here at TND, how Dave and I 
our theory on pricing and how we price things, everything behind me and over here, the whole store around me, everything has a price tag on it. Everything will always have a price tag on it. When you come into our store, you'll be able to browse. You will know how much things are. We're never going to not have a price and then just look it up online and charge you a, a higher amount relative to market. There's the odd time where a price tag has fallen off an item. And if it's not something that we regularly have, we will look it up and price it at what we were going to, what basically what we see. However, that's, that rarely happens. And as I alluded to, when I was talking about how things affect the owner, when we buy games here, we buy them based on the value at that time. So again, if I pay $50 for a game that I'm going to sell for $90, and then that game goes up to 120 and I leave my copy at 90 and I sell it, well, I've still made the profit that I intended to make on that game. Dave and I are both very busy. We both have full-time jobs during the week. This is a, a part-time project for us. We don't have time to come in here once a week or once a month even and reprice things. We'll typically reprice something. If we notice we're selling a lot more of a game at a certain price, we may look it up and, oh, okay, we got to up it a bit. Or when we're doing our restock, we may check the price if it's a game we it's our last copy or something like that. We're not screening the shelves. We're not scanning the shelves. We're not here every evening changing the prices on things. I think a lot of our customers like coming here because we don't do that. We really don't hold ill will to anyone who comes in find something that's underpriced relative to the current market and gets a deal. So for example, we got a huge PS3 collection in a few weeks ago and there was one of the Transformer games there and I think I priced it at $80 and that's kind of what the game is going for. So I had a customer come in who was looking for it and I pulled the $80 copy and I kind of said, yeah, here, it's right here, I just got it. And then they found another copy in our display case that I didn't know was there and it had a $55 price tag on it. So we must have had that game for about six to eight months. So we would have bought that game based on pricing it at $55. So of course we honored the $55 price. We will never take something with a price tag and then say, oh no, that's wrong and up it on you. We will honor the price that's on our games. So that person walked away with a great deal. And then the next person who really wants the game can pay $80 for it. Now that's top of market, but that's now my last copy of that game. As things go up, that $80 copy will become more desirable and it'll eventually sell. So that's kind of our theory on pricing. Everything has a price. Everything will always have a price and we will always honor that price. What I want to ask you guys is, are there game stores in your area that do this? So are there stores that do not have prices on their games or are there stores that will look at a price and then say, oh no, that's not the right price and try and change it on you. Cause I've heard that that happens too. Do you shop at these stores? Would you shop at a store that doesn't price their stuff? Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Um, it's just something I've been hearing a lot about and I would really like to get the community's opinion on it. Thanks for listening guys. And we'll talk to you again soon. It's looking at my notes, Dave. It's all good.